The great subcontinent of India. Present-day India is linguistically divided between a Dravidian-speaking southern part and an Indo-European-speaking north and northeast. How did this linguistic division come about? And did it coincide with migration and the change of population composition? Ancient DNA can help answer this question. The paper, The Formation of Human Populations in South and Central Asia in Science, looks into this question. They have sequenced genome-wide data from 523 individuals from Central Asia and northernmost South Asia from the Mesolithic period onward, which they then co-analyze with previously published ancient DNA from across Eurasia and with data from diverse present-day populations. They have no ancient DNA samples from India itself. One reason for this might be that DNA degrades fast in hot, humid climate. See my video Ancient DNA for more on this. Okay, so India, with its Hindu tradition and sole surviving live Indo-European religious tradition in the world today, it turns out share core migration characteristics with Europe. The story starts more than 7000 years ago. At this time in the north we have the North Eurasian Early Holocene Klein, of four source populations gradually blending into each other, starting in the west, with West European transitioning to East European, then West Siberians and finally East Siberian hunter-gatherers. And in the south, the South Eurasian early Holocene Klein, with three source populations also gradually blending into each other, the Anatolian, Iranian and South Asian hunter-gatherers. With the development of agriculture in the Fertile Crescent, there is a massive immigration of Anatolian farmers to Europe, and great Neolithic civilizations develop. See my video The Peasant Invasion of Europe for more on this. A similar development also takes place in the east, where Anatolian farmers migrate to South Central Asia, where the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex develops. So a west to east gradient of ancestry across Eurasia was formed in the Copper and Bronze Ages, the Southwest Asian Klein, with more Anatolian farmer related ancestry in the west and more West Siberian hunter gatherer or South Indian hunter gatherer related ancestry in the east, superimposed on primary ancestry related to early Iranian farmers. The establishment of this gradient correlates in time to the spread of plant-based agriculture across this region, raising the possibility that people of Anatolian ancestry spread this technology east just as they helped spread it into Western Europe. The ancestry profile, widespread during the Indus Valley civilization, composes of Iranian farmer, related and South Indian hunter-gatherer ancestry with negligible Anatolian farmer-related admixture. It was formed more than 7,000 to about 6,000 years ago, and it's believed that these people spoke Proto-Dravidian, potentially Elamo-Dravidian. With the Indo-European steppe migration, the early Holocene clients are replaced with five new ones. In Europe, the European client largely made up of Anatolian farmer ancestry with European hunter-gatherer admixture. See the video Ice Age Europe for more on this. And in North India, the Indus periphery cline evolves, largely made up of Iranian farmers with some South Asian hunter-gatherer admixture. On the steppes in Central Eurasia, however, the Aboriginal hunter-gatherer ancestry holds its ground, with some admixture from Anatolia Caucasian and Iranian farmers, now forming the Central Asian and Caucasus Jamnaya clines. This development takes place between seven and four and a half thousand years ago. But the Neolithic and Calcolithic civilizations will come to an end. There are several theories for why, but that's outside the scope of this video. What the ancient DNA tells us is that this decline coincides with a massive change in population, both in India and in Europe. In Europe, the arrival of migration from the Pontic Steppe and in India a similar development with the Aryan invasion. I will make a separate video on the technological developments on the Pontic and Central Asian steppes, in particular the horse and wagon, that facilitate these changes. But here we will focus on the movement of people and the subsequent changes in language, religion and culture. The heart is the Yamnayas on the Pontic steppe, 
part of what they in this paper call the Caucasus Klein. So these are the series of events. First, there is an early split about 5000 years ago of migration to the east, the Altai Mountains, possibly the source of the Indo-European Tocharian language. Second, around 4500 years ago, we have the drive westward. For the development in Europe, see the video Origins of the Indo-Europeans. Simultaneously with this, we have the migration to the east, to the Central Asian steppe where the Jamnaya intermingled with the Central Asian Klein to form a steppe Klein. So this is the basis for the arrival of Indo-Europeans in India and formation of ancient North Indians. South Indian is mainly a mixture of the Iranian farmers mixed with the South Asian hunter-gatherers and ancient North Indians is a mixture of the latter and the Indo-European steppe Klein. The steppe ancestry is mainly male and upper caste, that is, groups that traditionally view themselves as being of priestly status, like Brahmins, that tend to have a significantly higher ratio of central steppe ancestry. The existence of South Asian hunter-gatherers, with no West Eurasian admixture, is inferred. They model a split upon the initial populating of Eurasia along the south of the Himalayan path by your geography into South Asians, East Asians and Australasians. The findings also shed light on the origin of the second largest language group in South Asia, Dravidian. The strong correlation between ancient South Indian ancestry and present-day Dravidian languages suggests that ancient South Indian, a group with ancestry typical of the Indus periphery Klein moved south and east after the decline of the Indus Valley civilization to mix with South Indian hunter-gatherers. These ancient South Indian most likely spoke an early Dravidian language. Non-genetic support for an Indus Valley civilization origin of Dravidian languages include the present-day geographic distribution of these languages in southern India and southwestern Pakistan and a suggestion that some symbols on ancient Indus Valley seals denote Dravidian words or names. So, finally, there are remarkable parallels between the prehistory of South Asia and Europe. In both subcontinents of Eurasia, there were exchanges between people related to South West Asians and peninsular hunter-gatherers. Mixture of these groups led to the Indus periphery Klein in South Asia and the European Klein in Europe. And on both subcontinents, there were people arriving in the second and third millennia BC who descended from the mixture of peoples related to Yamnaya steppe pastoralists that mixed further with local populations in South Asia, forming the ancient North Indian. In both cases, mixture of these heterogeneous populations those with steppe pastoralist related admixture and those without drove the modern ancestry makeup of both Europe and India. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. Till next time, I wish you all the best.